Hello everyone, and welcome to Sea View Quantum Network. I'm your presenter Daniel, and I'm here with producer Claudia Pareco. Our opening song features Reach for the Stars, from Cyclone's new album, Showtime, available on all music stores and platforms. A moment of your time is one of the most extraordinary gifts we could ever be given. We are honored every time we've received a moment of your time. We are servants of the new age, the time of prophecy, the time of the ascending sixth sun. We are a platform for alchemists and multidimensional souls. We connect with many planes of reality and assist the awakening journey. We are pure light, transmitters of high vibrational light out into reality. Our shows are held on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. At any moment to participate on our shows, please call 805-830-8344 and press 1 to talk with the host. Call for free at 805-830-8344 and wait in line, or you can use Take My Call. And for $11, you can jump a long list of callers. Do so at www.paypal.me slash p-u-r-e-c-o slash 11, and then please PM or email Claudia Pareco at cview1111 at gmail.com and include the phone number you'll be using to call the show. All of our podcasts are easily found in all social media and are available free, live, or on demand. To request a show, please write to Claudia Pareco at cview1111 at gmail.com or visit our website, cview1111.net. Now, let's listen to our host and topic of the day. Thank you, Danny, and welcome everybody to CView 2022. Today we have Emotional Energy Transformation Series, and the topic of today is the Art of Self-Healing. We are so proud to present host Sjoven Nikolov with her seasonal podcast, Emotional Energy Transformation in which each episode will cover a different part of this transformative healing modality where she is the expert. She has come up with a methodology that is easily to follow to get the best of yourself. She often emphasizes the importance of taking back your power to become your own source of healing to break the chains of codependencies of an outside in consciousness. She further explains how to begin the process of getting the mind, body, soul, and spirit working together as a team of one, not one or other. But what does self-healing mean exactly? Does it mean your body is able to restore its optimal state of health starting from a disease? Can your body self-heal if it's seriously ill? So let's bring Sylvan to the show so she can tell us a little bit more how our emotions, how the DNA, the energetic imprints, all of the secrets that we are all longing for. And welcome Sylvan. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, Claudia. It's always great to be here. Um, and I'm, where would you, thank you, where would well. you like us to start? <laughs> you, you know, it is a, it is, this is a fascinating topic because, uh, you know, we have always, like humanity, we have always been searching for the answers of living longer, but not only living longer, but living healthy and we have all well we have since you were a little child probably and I that was my case we have always heard of people getting sick didn't get getting dying because of illnesses we have just come out of a pandemic 
which killed thousands of people and ignited a fear within us that there was this outside something just waiting for us to get out of our houses and we would get sick. So okay. the idea of self-healing is one of these new thoughts. And I think it's because we have grown into consciousness that now we can actually think of the possibility we can of us being do that. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're correct. Yes. Well, first I'd like to say that it's a really important, worthy topic to investigate. It's a, it's a worthy way to feel into what we're seeing because this self-healing has been around forever, but we were really taught to give our power away to everything. Everything external told us what was true, and we lost touch with the truth within ourselves. And so self with a capital S is, is the healer within you that is of higher consciousness that we're taught that we can only access um, through things we do from an external um, way. And, and that's true in the beginning when we reacquaint ourselves with what we are inside of ourselves. And so it's an important topic, especially, as you say, coming out of a pandemic. And, and it, it begins as a preventative measure, I would say, because um, I've been working with this energy, which was a concept when I first heard of it. And it's evolved through my process of using these basic set of tools and how they have evolved through me in my process. And so... Uh, it's a really great thing when you understand that when you decide to take on a form, emotional energy becomes part of your program because it is, it is the part of the program that creates duality in this dimension. When we, we get divided from our um, knowing that we are the, the God within us that heals. And so then we have mom and dad and religion and genders and everything else you can possibly think of the humans are given to uh, divide themselves from others, creating more separation within the self. Um, but today we have, and so that's how it begins, and everybody kind of understands that. If you just feel that for a second, you can see how it's just what we've all been taught. And so coming around, I'd say, the past 30 years, it's really been escalated into remembering. Remember, we've been dis dismembered from our true self. And so we, we're in the process of rapid awakening and remembering these parts of ourselves that can serve us now as things continue to evolve and grow and change at, a, at an unprecedented rate. And so, um, yes, self-healing. It's, it's interesting how people perceive it because it's a, it's a huge industry. And uh, there are sound baths and tuning forks and pendulums and healers and religion and animals for emotional support and supplements and medicine. And we're not saying there's anything wrong with any of that because where most people are is still from the outside in. I, I require this supplement to give my physical body the nutrition to keep it healthy on that level. But what actually keeps your body healthy is the source energy within it, is the, is the spirit that gives it life. And so it takes a while for you to, number one, begin to resonate with the truth of what we're saying and then use the tools to help you um, download that consciousness of wholeness. And what that does is little by little acquaints you with the light that you are um, and so you can actually experience it. Now, there's a million people in this world who bought books and listened to people's podcasts and listen to people's shows and uh, go to people to experience these things and they'll all agree, you know, we're all made of light here. But it's rare that a person actually experiences themselves as that light or consciousness. And so what we help people do is to get them to that place within themselves that they are consciously connected to themselves as the consciousness they are and moving everything from that place. And so it begins where you are. And everything is a vibrational frequency. And you have to be a vibrational match to a virus, to this, to that, in order to get it. And you said something very important 
uh, just a few minutes ago about how then we were afraid to go outside and get this virus, but the fear was in everybody first. This is how humans are manipulated emotionally, and, and the big emotion is fear. And so as we're listening to an authority outside of ourselves, we respond to that without going in and, and really listening to the self, which might have a different solution or answer for you. And it can be hard to push everything else away to be able to listen to that voice. And I myself went through that for a couple of months in, in, you know, in this whole vaccination thing and vaccinated or not vaccinated and what did it mean within me? And um, I toyed with that and went back and forth. And when I finally got everything out of the way, I decided not to do it. That, that is what my truth was. And we're not saying anybody makes any wrong decisions. We think it's all great because you see that vaccine is consciousness as well. It, it's not that these things outside of you, that there's anything wrong with them. So don't hear that. It's the consciousness with which people come to these things with that makes the difference in how they work for them. So all too often because of religion and others have been taught to ask for a healing because our body has this sickness within it. And so if we go to a healer hoping the healer will heal it, the healer doesn't heal a thing. The healer is a facilitator to help you get out of your way enough that the healing can happen. And the only healing that really happens is from within you because you have God within you. You have, um, you know, Yeshua, the, the golden healing energy, which was sent to help humans overcome the duality within their perception. So we use golden light for that reason, is that there are metaphysical differences as to why certain frequencies of light will not work for healing that is lasting. And again, it's the consciousness of the person that goes. So in other words, if you were to begin your self-healing process saying, I am whole within myself, and I want to know myself and experience myself as a whole that I am, that's a whole different conversation with yourself than saying, I have cancer and I need to know how to get it out of me and heal it, or I need to know how to fix it. And that, that in itself says there's something wrong with me. And consciousness that heals never sees anything as wrong. It sees it as whole and in that it is healed. So, you know, you can, go to, you can go to five sound baths a week, which are great, and they're fun, but they only are temporary. And you can use tuning forks, and you can go to healers, and you can go to a priest, and you can go to all these things. But the thing that I've found that has been lasting for myself is the art of self-healing through emotional energy transformation. And emotional energy transformation happens within the emotional body. And because... The emotional energy is within the physical body that creates our dualistic experience here in this dimension. If you transform one, the other transforms as well. And so this is how I've found to reclaim the light within my form as well as the light of my soul. So that is really about it. And so if you took everything, okay, you look today as if they burned every book in, in the world, and they made it impossible for you to get to your priest. All the electricity went out. All the phones were shut down. What would you do? It's, it's almost like I was, I was kind of chuckling about this a few minutes ago because they have these commercials. I don't, I don't pay to have YouTube not have commercials. And so they have these commercials <laughs> on there about these survivalists, right? And they're anticipating this tragedy to happen in the world where everything goes down and you have nothing to eat but what we can sell you in these packages and these solar generators, okay? And so if we're dependent upon external reality for everything, then if everything in external reality goes away, what are you left with? You, 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 if everybody would just realize that their source of everything comes from within them and how to work it from the inside out, they wouldn't ever worry about going without anything or being unhealed. So, you know, in truth, uh, 
your source or God or whatever you want to call it within you is the source of your nourishment, not the organic food you choose to eat. We're not saying that there's anything wrong with organic food, and in fact it does help people based upon the level of relationship they have between their physical body and the physical food. But in truth, that is not what keeps you healthy. That is not what wakes you up every morning. It is the source within everything that gives everything life. And so we encourage and we work with people to break down this thing called ego or whatever separates you from that truth in order for you to have that become your experience in life. Now, when I decided, and you know about this, when I decided not to get that vaccination, I was finally sorted out everything in my mind and body. And um, I came down with something I didn't even realize with COVID until it was over, really, because I don't approach things that happen like that with fear. And as I was initially, it was it came on so fast, and it was very interesting how that happened. I, uh, I gave someone a huge hug and a kiss right after they got boosted. Mm-hmm. And uh, within hours, I'm like, well, we're not going to have, we're not going to be able to go out tomorrow to get that sandwich, you know. <laughs> I felt the shift in my energy so fast. It was unbelievable. And I just did what I know how to do. You know, I gave myself a rainbow drop therapy, which is with essential oils because it's great for respiratory. And, you know, got on my crystal bed for healing, which is a wonderful way to have the crystals um, work with the water that is actually in your body for healing. It's a wonderful tool. Anyway, and then I just got in bed. And I kept imagining and feeling myself as the light that I now experience myself to be and speaking to myself saying, thank you, God, for my perfect health. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And just going in and thank you for the, you know, my beauty and thank you for the integrity of my, uh, of my physical body and thank you for the light that it actually is and thank you for the consciousness that, that, that heals and thank you for uh, the wholeness that I am, and, and, and you have conversations of that nature. And it probably took about three, four days before, you know, I kind of came to more into reality, or if you want to call it that, physical reality. And um, it was just at this point of just drinking a lot of fluids and taking it easy and listening. And so I took myself through what most people were definitely afraid of. And when it comes down to it, this is the truth in this, too. It matters not the choice you made. It, it, what mattered to me personally was what I felt I could make peace with the most at this time. Because in truth, mm-hmm. that vaccine is as much consciousness as that virus. But somehow I have it hooked up that that would not be good for me. And in that belief, not being able to be at that level of consciousness with that vaccine, I could have absolutely had a different experience with the vaccine. So for me, I could overcome a virus much easier because I can make peace with that. I Mm -hmm. I, I have experienced in that, you see? So it's really kind of a, a tricky dance, but it's, you know, everything in truth here is just consciousness. It's just light. And we have to, you know, it's a lot of healing and, um, and, and working with yourself to be able to have that experience. But it, it works. It and what I works. hear, what I hear, uh, Sivan, is that it is an individual path. What I hear is that once you get into that level of consciousness that you're talking about, then the next steps are your steps. Like you cannot walk the way the other person does and expect, okay, right. everything's going to be so because she said so or because he said so or because the book says so. It is a road that you have to pave yourself and walk it every day in truth and in confidence and always, I, I think what I love what you said is in that mind of, okay, let's see what it feels for me. Like, let's discover, let's uh, find out what works and what doesn't work for you, little by little and always with the mind of a child, like, like you are getting a new toy to discover. Right. It's, it's, you know, 
how can I, who have been working with the tools of self-healing, and this is another thing for me, too, um, that I realized is how can I be of this path and actually get a vaccine? <laughs> it goes, it, and so for me, it was about also being an in integrity and not being afraid of the virus and, you know, and, and really honoring everybody's choice because everyone's at a different place. And I'm not saying don't go to a doctor. I have I'm so grateful for doctors. Are you kidding? If I can't overcome something and I require help from them in some way, I will absolutely go because it, until you're at that level to be able to relate to yourself as consciousness, speak to yourself as the consciousness consciousness you are, to the consciousness that it is becoming, to change the program that is so deeply instilled, you're going to have to go to that doctor, and there's nothing wrong with it. And supplements are wonderful. I, you know, I look forward to the day. I keep just nourishing myself from the inside out, and, you know, I still take supplements. So it's just this one thing at a time, you know, what do you do, and how do I go to something when um, I am taking it, or why am I doing this, and am I getting the most out of a healing session with someone? You can go to a great healer and work with it on the level of consciousness, which is much higher than even the healer, and whatever they're doing can be much more of a profound profound experience, and not because of what they're doing, but because of your relationship to what's happening. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I, are, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah the, because there are my, no healers. My, yeah, my most profound healing that has happened to me, the other person has not been aware of. Yeah, and, and that always correct. It's like, really, you didn't feel that? Really, you didn't? And you're like, oh my god. So why yeah. is it that for me? For me, what it, I can see that person when I had it, and I'm sure that I was just one number for them. But for me, I, it it will always be in part of like my transformation journey. The moment that I was with them, and it's not the yeah. other way around, which is it's. It's so funny. Correct. It's the experience you're actually having with yourself during whatever you're going mm -hmm. through. And, you know, that's what makes the difference. And so, you know, only higher consciousness heals. And so when you're going to a problem with the same consciousness, you know, and they're not of any real adept at working with higher consciousness, there's this whole dance that has to take place. The also self-healing being important right now is just like that survivalist for food and water and everything else. If all of that was taken away, your access to your animals, your everything else that you're in codependence with in terms of your emotional stability, your mental health, um, your physical health, what would you do? And this is why we say if you learn how to get in touch with the source of all healing, nourishment, love, which is what it is, and the light within you and start operating from that level with your physical body, you can literally tell it to let go of the illusion of disease. Because emotional energy is the only thing that creates disease within the body, in the physical body. And so when you learn how to be the love that you are, make that love uh, uh, an experience in the framework of your reality through the connection that you make through a medit you know, meditation every day, and uh, the different tools we use to show you how to connect at deeper levels and to listen, um, you'll have quite a different experience. You won't be de dependent, uh, dependent upon something that you can't access. And when we do have classes, and we have some great courses, some are three months, some are six months, we really help you listen to yourself, uh, you know, to, to listen. We have the client listen to themselves on how they're saying things so they can, because it's very quick how we're conditioned to say things and speak of things and what you speak, uh, it, it becomes. And so shifting the consciousness within you changes the language that you speak and it helps you much more readily learn how to go inside for that which you are so spoiled. We're so used to having things so accessible um, to us. And so relying on the self with a capital S is helpful in every single aspect of your life. And so we encourage people now to get more with that. Um, in, it, again, in the courses, we teach a lot of remote work. And it takes a lot of focus, but it's really worth it. Uh, because if you can't get to that person and you've developed your abilities to be able to help them from where you are, that's going to really be helpful in the future.
And so there's lots of these higher level skills that we help people develop. So they're not, they, they realize that they don't need this external thing in order to access something for themselves. You know, it's really within them, but then there are others that you can connect with that can help you in those times. So all the books yeah. and all the... All, Go ahead. Kevin, in your in your experience, is there a point where this um, self the art of self healing just doesn't work? For example, when your body is really seriously ill. Well, that's a good, great question. By the way, um, we recommend it first to get to know yourself as a preventative measure. And then when something has manifested physically within you, then you're dealing with a whole other level of healing. And so the way I have uh, had that happen is with myself years ago doing this work like a duodenal ulcer. Um, I went at it completely from an emotional uh, energy transformation way. And so when I was really getting the tools down of working with the golden light first, um, working with it daily in meditation, and took myself to the next level of the self-healing, then all I did was just learn how to become aware of that uh, within my body that was resistant to that higher consciousness. So most of the time people meditate and they're not connected to their experience. They're just in this blissful place and they come back and, well, that was nice. And so it's Connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect. Um, we, we show people how to stay in that state regardless of whether they're meditating or not now. That's how far this work has evolved. But what I found was that um, it takes more of a focus. And when we talk about focus, we don't mean thinking about it. When we talk about focus, we mean learning how to use the mind as a placeholder, like it, it, it settles in the area of the body and holds it there. It, it's the observer, which is the love that you actually are, which is then the energy, uh, which is the essence of the condition itself, because there is nothing here that is not love, only that which doesn't know itself to be the love that it is. And so when I was bringing golden light around this, what appeared within my left duodenal area as a black bowling ball, the golden light went toward this mass, and it initially it slipped off like it was oiled. It would have had nothing to do with it. But you see, in this teaching, what we emphasize and teach and remind people of is to not think about what you see or feel, because love really doesn't care. Love just loves. Mm -hmm. And so you can't look at something as being wrong or bad or and, and annoyed or push on it. Love doesn't push, it just is. And the more you can learn how to make it just a present, then the faster your healing will happen. So it took, a, you know, a few months for me to uh, just be the presence of love for this specific condition within my body, and that's for it I, every day. I just watched it change. It, it began to allow the golden light to cling to the surface of it, and then I noticed how it, over time it became smaller and smaller and smaller until it revealed itself as this black lump of coal. These are all metaphors. And mm -hmm. it popped itself open, and there was this black, tarry, sticky substance there called bitterness. And so mm -hmm. this was a, a, another level of my going in with the tools that I know how to do in the discovery of this condition. And boy, was that part of my body resistant. And if you know what bitterness actually feels like, there's a heck of a lot of anger mm -hmm. and blame and not letting go and <laughs> a lot of resistance and bitterness. And so I was given the opportunity to, you know, little at a time, go for it and dwindle it to nothing. Now... When it's something like cancer, that's connected to a lot of deep-seated things. And you can be as healed as fast as you can surrender to allowing it to happen. But because people are in fear, because people are in, um, you know, under the doctor's care, uh, they're surrounded by people who really do care about them but are hoping they'll do everything they can to stay alive. I mean, there's this whole lot of... Um, you know, a whole lot of decision making in that. And so what are what they're making their decisions from reinforce what's happening within them. So if they come from I have cancer, I want to go to the doctor and get rid of it. 
then they're not really working at the level of consciousness that would help the condition come around quicker. I would recommend that you absolutely work with your doctor, and in fact, I uh, do have a couple of people that do have cancer, and we also work with it on an emotional level you know, simultaneously because physical and emotional go hand in hand. And so results in these areas can come about a lot faster. These methods that people have, though, are, um, you know, these, uh, what do you call it, these, um, what, the, what the doctors, these processes or these uh, treatments that the doctors mm -hmm. give them really take the wind out of them, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it takes, you know, a connection, there's a lot of hopelessness when, when someone gets cancer. There's a lot of things like that. To, to bolster somebody emotionally to get them to the point of consciousness is quite a big job. They're just happy to, to feel what they do in the, the way they can feel at the time that we're working with them. And, you know, it's not something that I have found that people stick to readily because they're still in so much worry and about their condition. So it takes you know, it's pretty tricky. Once something is manifested to that level, though, um, there have been people instantaneously healed, and what happens is they have gone somewhere where they believe it can happen, and they get out of their way enough, and it does. I mean, like, gone. Mm -hmm. And they have a new lease in life. So, um, yeah. So when you've manifested a condition as, as, as serious as, as cancer, then that emotion has been vibrating within your physical body for a long time. You know, and in some people it goes way back. And so there is always, you know, something more to be revealed. And somebody has to be open and someone has to feel hopeful no matter what the condition is. And that's not uh, as easy said, uh, you know, it's much easier said than done. The process is the same, though. You know, sometimes we call something a miracle. And do you think that maybe this is nothing but a manifestation of something that we cannot comprehend? Yeah, there is no such thing as miracles. In fact, it, they, things happen and we call them a miracle because it seems so contrary to our uh, normal human experience. But our normal human experience is living the miracle. That's what's real. Everything else that we've created is is the illusion, and so that you see how how people these things have to switch in people's minds and the way they talk. Their consciousness has to shift. In fact, we work with people, and we say, okay, if you've got something going on, ask for the shift in consciousness necessary to help you get to a different place within this. Because that's really all that's required is a shift in consciousness. And so if you ask for that, and you talk to yourself like that, and you open up your heart and offer that up, because you really feel the truth of things, yet it's a big, long walk between the knowing of truth and the experience of truth in your life, you know, the shift in consciousness can help you move yourself much uh, more readily forward. And I have a lot of success with that. So miracles are what they used to call them in the Bible days, you know? More miracles, yeah, more money, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, so, so basically what, um, what you have said is that our, this emotional energy, maybe imprints or blocks are what are the roots of most of our illnesses or manifestations? Yes, because emotional energy is what divides your perception. Emotional energy, negative emotion, uh, you know, it was the emotional body was formed along with the physical body within the womb. It's just what happens when you come into form. And so your mental body isn't even able to divide uh, until it's about seven or eight years old. And so that whole time between the moment of conception through seven to eight years old in some cases, you're just being constantly imprinted with negative emotions of the world. And then they're reinforced by what you learn from your mother and your father and the church and society and everything else. And because everybody believes it, the collective belief is much stronger than a personal belief. And so, um, you know, getting down to what your truth is about something can take a lot more work. Um, 
Yeah, so emotional energy, it's not what you think about something, it's what you feel about it. Whatever, people look at all the, you know, um, traumas in their childhood, and believe me, we've all had them. But it was not about what happened. It was about what you felt about what happened that created the wound that you now talk about with your mind and make a story and empower the story about what happened. It, it's not what happened, it's how you felt about what happened. It's not what was said, it was how you felt about what was said. And for a number of years, for at least seven years, we have no ability to discern that's just him having a bad day. That has nothing to do with me. We're just imprinted with negative emotion, and so as we feel, so we interpret with the mental body. So the mind is always interpreting through the wound. And the emotional energy, has it's invisible. It has a life of its own that then the mind interprets and then speaks. And so when you have a feeling in the emotional body, somewhere in the physical body lives that vibration of anger within you, and you're triggered by external reality to be angry, and then the mind focuses on how it feels, you can make that anger so big you can hurt somebody because you've lost touch with the, the feeling within you and it's become an emotion which then reacts to how it feels. And I have found personally within myself, no matter what has shown up, that it will come to love if you make it available and unwavering. If you are not judging, which is dividing, what you think or, you know, what you see or what you feel, you're just being that presence of love, there's only one thing that can happen. Eventually it will come to know itself to be the love that it is because in truth there is nothing here but love. There is nothing here in this dimension that is even solid. It's all light. And so how we relate to our experience is how we experience it. And I'm thinking about everything that you're saying. So, you know, it's, it's a lot to take in. We we recommend that whoever's listening to this, you know, just sit and replay it while they're lying down with their eyes closed. Yes. Um, yeah, trying to figure that out. Um, so there's really nothing that will not come to love. But you know, a lot of people we're just in a society. We're in a we're in a in a in a planet where everybody just wants to go get a, a quick fix. You know, just one one more workshop or one more of this and, and I'll be all right. But it's, it's not lasting. And so when I learned how to work with these tools to the degree that I have, it's become the only thing in my life that has been lasting. It has a lasting effect. I mean, there were, I couldn't figure out when I was channeling and using white light and teaching channeling classes, you know, I was like, God, there's this black cloud above my head. I just can't shake it. And the only thing that helped that black cloud dissolve was literally transforming it. You know, we, we can push out this stuff as far as we want, but it really is part of our experience. There's nothing that is separate from us. And so it's not about making anything go away. It's about reclaiming it as the light that it is. So when I talk about, like my book, The Absence of Evil, Love's Reclamation of the Soul, the soul is emotional energy in its lower form. You know, there are the highest aspects of the soul would be the spirit within it. But people don't experience the soul as spirit because they don't transform the emotional energy to be congruent, to be consistent within the whole of their being. So the soul in truth is spirit, just like the physical body. And there's one thing to know that and another to have the experience of that. And so higher consciousness and working with yourself as that consciousness has really been the, the key to um, accessing spirit within the form instead of having to go anywhere to access it. We think we're, you know, it, it's all these levels of separation that emotional energy creates and uh, it begins within the emotional body first. And so that's why people can't think their way out of the box. If everything that everybody has out there that, that works to heal people was working, there's be no there's nothing to heal. That it comes in, if it doesn't come in a pill form or it's not something else we can just read and add more facts to memory or, um, you know, so we can have conversations and agree with people, then, you know, uh, it, it's a lot. Uh, to, it's a lot to have people take it upon themselves to uh, 
take responsibility for their healing. They're, they, you know, and it's it's all subconscious, and people don't even realize how that creates codependent relationships with their families. How these feelings um, can you can be hooks for the family to sustain a certain way that they have them, you know. Um, for some people, it, it's great. It's good to hold on to it because everyone will feel sorry for them, or everybody will give them what they need. You see, it's a lot of codependence in that way. And so, when you become empowered with the self, then that that takes everybody off the hook. You become more self-sufficient, and not from a place of singularity, from a place of wholeness. And then you just don't play the games that codependent people play, and then they just really don't find it too comfortable for you to be around. Because it makes it, it brings to their surface the, their own patterns, even without ever saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an uncomfortable place when you're not into healing. I know, but do, do you think that um, the design of life is that way? Like, we come from love, or from consciousness, from everything that mm -hmm. is not separate. We come to this life just to get away from, the, to have the illusion of being separate, and we tr try our best to get as separate as we can, because we think that we are individuals, and that by only thinking about ourselves, it's the way to go. So you go as far, as far, as far as you can, and then you only realize, oh, no, I'm really not separate. And then you go back to that oneness. So is it that it's white? Well, no, it's not white. So the design of life is that way, where you come, you separate, you go back to integrate. But every time, I wonder, every time that we come back, every time that the consciousness of the world gets a little higher as the wholeness, are we going to get back and back and back to a place where we are not longer coming to here, or are we going to experience the life and world, like what they said on a planet is, where everyone that comes is in a higher consciousness and just to explore? I don't know. Well, it, we're going to see, won't we? I mean, I, I can only speculate, uh, really, I mean, I don't pr pretend to have that answer, but what I've found for myself in this art of self-healing and this emotional energy transformation is that um, there are really no such thing as ghosts and there's no such thing as demons and all of that is just part of our own negative emotions and how it becomes bigger in our experience and how it becomes part of our experience is because uh, some of us who have been here since the dawn of time uh, has played many parts here and each time the body dies because we haven't made the body conscious and we haven't transformed the emotional energy the emotional energy the lower part of quote the soul stays here and so the emotional energy of who we've been stays here and they want to call that past lives or karma but when you take form on again and you come back in then you're becoming part of the physical program, which includes emotional energy, which gives you automatic division within yourself. Well, if you choose to do the work to reclaim those parts of you, i.e., transform the emotional energy, and if you just begin with the reflections in your life today, right now, then you'll find through the process of just doing that, the discovery of other parts that require love in order for you to reclaim them as well and I'm referring to the emotional the negative emotional energy that we've left on the planet before and so mm -hmm. now we have a lot of people who have incarnated to be um, you know part of the old experience that we're co then coming out of and if you notice the the new souls that are coming into the planet being much more high vibration um, they're not coming in with a lot of the issues that the, our generation took the flack for, so to speak. And it's through our transformation and our waking up to the best of our ability. You know, I and mean, don't be hard on yourself to think you have to do it. This just happens to be my path. Um, you know, I found that reclaiming the emotional energy within, within my emotional body also reclaims the light within the physical. And yes, as you make the physical body, the, you know, if you, when you make the consciousness within the physical body conscious, then the body, I feel, doesn't have to, like, die the way it did before. It would be like, um, 
what do they call the resurrection of, of Yeshua, right? He just went back into everything. He didn't go anywhere. <laughs> he just reclaimed his body, too. Uh, so we can just kind of vaporize. At least that's what I'm going for, you know, this life. I'm like, hey, why the heck not? If I reclaim enough emotional energy, then I'm living from a place of wholeness, and I just am. I just am. And therefore I can be and, you know, influence others to uh, want to take that path. But, yeah, I think there's a point where we don't have to come back, but we have to reclaim ourselves as the light that we are in truth in order to have that experience. Otherwise, we still have shadows we've left here from before. And, and emotional, negative emotional energy feeds off of negative emotional energy. So you see all wars in, in the world are still being recreated. Have you, have you looked and noticed the loop we keep living in? Yeah, uh, it's one like, again oh, and don't. again. Yeah, yeah you, it, it's, it's part of the program here. And, and the only way i found to cease the program within myself of war and division is to come to love within myself first. And everything mm -hmm. I've discovered about uh, emotional energy, uh, you know, in, in houses, which we also heal and things like that, is that it's just all emotional in nature. And it needs something else to feed off of. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think we can absolutely end the cycle for ourselves. But it is the process of, you know, like you say, we're taught to be individuals. And it's just trying to find your unique essence, right, which is the spirit beneath the ego of what everybody tells you that you should be. So the spirit has a way it wants to express itself. So we become somewhat of an individual. But actually, we're individuating. And sometimes it's necessary to remove ourselves from the collective and what the collective thinks in order to find out what our truth is. We, uh, I only found the essence of my truth by transforming the emotional energy within me that created my perception of the collective. Everybody, everybody in life is so reactive to things, most people. They're not in control of it because and you, the only way to control it is to transform it. Otherwise, you're just stuffing it down and trying to act something you don't feel and it still has a vibrational frequency. Earth is, everything is energy and energy is everything. So. Um, we have a lot more power in this when we see it for the truth that it is, want to, want to experience as our, ourselves for the truth that we are, and then run life from that truth. Then you live in the world and not of the world, and you can be really helpful to people who um, would like to, you know, see that for themselves. And so the, the inside-out approach is really how we create reality anyway, and it's really um, would be hu be hu humanity to uh, begin to get with that um, just in case you couldn't get to something and you all of a sudden had to rely on self for that experience or for that healing or for that nutrition or for, you know. We really are that powerful, but it takes a little more work than a lot of people would like to do. Um, we do have an Art of Self-Healing workshop, which is really fun for people who are in the healing profession, whether they're Reiki people or massage people. Um, it helps people connect a lot to themselves as consciousness, especially if the practitioner is connected to that within themselves, if they're doing the work. Um, we've had some really good times in those workshops and some profound healing has happened, um, you know, during them. And so it's kind of fun, like this little three-day process. <laughs> <laughs> and how can I be part of that workshop if I want to be? Well, if you go to my website, it's my name, SiobhanNicolau.com, and you look on the home page, um, there is a, a little uh, advertisement there for the Art of Health Healing workshop. And it takes two people in order to have it. So you have to have somebody to do it with. It uh, can be done over Zoom or in person if I'm traveling to the area for sure. Um, and uh, it gives you all the information. You just click on the link and it will take you to the details. And uh, you can go from, from there. But it's really wonderful. I think there's a lot of really well-meaning people out there in the healing arts. And, and then what I noticed and part of what we do too is we help the healing modalities that are available now, we help them evolve 
because there is this thing called consciousness that is missing in a lot of these healing modalities. And not only, it's not the doing of healing, it's the being of healing. And so a lot of people do healing things, but, but they're not really, they're different when they leave their healing practice. It's, it's like when we work with people, we like them to, it's like the difference between being someone at work and then going home and being completely different. So mm. this is a consciousness and a way of being. You just don't do healing for these people. You become that yourself and show them how to be that for themselves. And so there's a whole lot of things that uh, go on. So anyway, whether it's acupuncture or whether it's yoga or, um, you know, body work or anything like that, we help. We have programs that we can help create a whole new system of healing using the consciousness of love and golden light to bring it about and become sovereign. You become sovereign in your experience. You take personal responsibility and, and really begin to experience yourself as the source of whatever you're seeking or manifesting in your life. It's quite profound. And Tian, if they mention they heard this uh, through you, through CDU, do you get a special discount? Well, sure. If they mention it through CView and they sign up for the workshop, um, yeah, we would give them a 15% discount. Okay, perfect. So, and remember, share, share, share the, all this information. So, the art of self-healing, uh, from what we have heard, is something available for anyone, correct? Correct. Any, you know, we have children love this classes and elderly people like it it just um, it doesn't matter any walk of life and any person because we're all made of love and that's the one thing everyone's looking for and so we have different ways each one is an individual too and the individual work we do um, is based upon who you are uh, as a person who you are as a soul where you are on your evolutionary path and so they're kind of tailored to you personally which is nice yeah we do this, use this uh, processes. We use um, golden light meditation. Um, it doesn't mean you have to meditate uh, for great lengths of time during the day. Um, you know, that's a big deterrent for a lot of people. But usually with meditation, what it means is they have to take time to get out of their head before they can actually meditate. And that's what creates the amount of time. <laughs> So we give someone a reading and they say, hey, I'd like to know more about this and I'd like a reading and whatnot. Um, oftentimes the act, an activation will be part of that experience for them, uh, but they are separate usually, you know, meditations. And activations are good depending upon where you are, how I'm guided to work with the powers that be to help um, awaken more quickly that consciousness within you not only in your mind, but in your body. And so we have activations for that. Um, meditation workshops. And it takes a while to be able to have you use the tools and for the consciousness to begin to download into your awareness. So it's a lot about self-awareness and there's energy management tools. Um, like I say, we have tools now that we're showing people how to use so they don't have to worry about sitting down to meditate and getting connected and then disconnecting and getting up and then sitting down again and connecting. It's, it's more about learning how to stay connected. And so the, the tools that we also show you how to get out of your head so you can stay connected, how to stay in the body to be connected, you can use throughout your day, no matter what line of work you're in or anything like that. And then the deeper work comes from paying attention to how you feel um, learning to use the world as the, the uh, resource it is for your own healing without being attached to what the world is showing. And, um, yeah, that's fun. There's no real cookie-cutter way we work with anybody. And, and that is the way it has to be. It, 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 I, I believe any workshop today has to be um, defined to the individual, like what works for you, what doesn't work for you, change this, change that. And that's why this type of workshop work very well with anyone that wants to. So they can go to Sioven Nicolau, which is S as in Sam, I O B as in Brian, H A N as in Nancy, 
N as in Nancy, I, C as in Carlos, O, L as in Larry, A, O, U, dot com. And that's her name. And last name, you can also find her on Facebook. And you have also a YouTube channel. And they can also write you at, at your sovereign mastery at gmail.com, correct? Yes, sovereign mastery at gmail, yeah. Yeah, gmail.com. We'd be happy to help you any way we can, either, you know, get you acquainted with these tools for yourself um, for personal use or use with your children, which is really fun. We love to work with parents so they can show their children how to, you know, stay greater connected to the love that they are. And um, because remember, all of your emotional imprinting is from the time you're conceived till you're seven. And so we have a whole way to work with kids with art, which is really fun, and the games they love to play. They love it. <laughs> and so to help them get connected to something much better than, you know, the dramas of the world is really is beneficial for them in the future. And so we can also help you with your practice. And um, depending upon how much time it takes to help you integrate these tools, not only into you but into your practice, we help you birth a whole new system for uh, that's appropriate for this day and age in the way of healing and um, it can also create an outline for a publication, which is fantastic, because we learn so much. We're redoing things so much through the process that um, a book can come out of it, too. So good stuff. Thank you, Claudia. That's, you're welcome. And talking about a book, Sylvan, you're writing your second book, I heard? I am, yes. Oh, and nice. what the so second book goes so over, it's all about the metaphysics of it, um, the differences between the things, it talks about the language of love, is, it just goes over all kinds of things. So it's more in-depth about what we talked about, uh, emotional energy transformation, how these things come about, um, you know, my experiences, how this works, um, you know, on all different levels. So it, it's, it's really great. It's coming along. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great, and we're going to announce it also once it's ready for everybody to have it. So now we're going to we're getting to the end of today's show. I don't know if there's anything that you want to leave our listeners with. Yes, um, if I can do it, you can definitely do it, and I would encourage you to go online and get a copy of my first book. The Absence of Evil, Love's Reclamation of the Soul. You can get it through me on my website or you can get it on Amazon. And it really shows you my own path to getting to where I am today. So it shows you that from where you are, the use of the tools, what it does and what it opens up for you. Quite a, you know, and then you'll see that you can do this too. Thank you. And everybody, put it on your calendar. Helen Nicolau will be back for her uh, July, July show on the 22nd. So, and she'll going to let us know the topic of that day. So it's always a new topic and a new transformation for humanity. And thank you so much, Helen, for being here. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>